Hey, good morning. This is the Tuesday before uh, Big Fed Day. Tuesday, uh, what is it, the 18th or something? Uh, Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday, December 18th, 2018. This is your daily Forex trading strategy session hosted at the Forex.today YouTube channel. Brought to you by TradersWay.com. Let's go. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Hello, my name is Wayne McDonald. I am the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. We're a boutique foreign exchange trading brokerage firm, and we would like to earn your loyalty, your respect, and your business. And we'll do that by providing you a world-class customer service and support and training to help you succeed. Fast execution speed to get your trades in the market like lightning and competitive spreads. Please visit tradersway.com if these webinars are helping you just to pay it back. Open a demo account, take seconds. But really on the long run, we hope that you will find success as a trader. And then one day when you do feel comfortable trading real money in the market, you will choose Trader's Way as your, the prime brokerage for your for your successful Forex trading business. Uh, I wish that for you. I do. I wish that for you. If I can help you do that, that's what I want. So how are you doing? And let me, uh, let's start out this way. Why don't you let me know what currency pairs are on your mind? What would you like me to cover today? So benefit of getting here early. Euro cab, that's where we ended. Okay. USBN. Oh, look at you guys. So many, you trade things I don't trade. It's interesting. Kiwi, shirt, sure. Kiwi dollar, Kiwi yen. Yeah, our cat says US dollar came down. Seems like maybe we found support. Well, here's the thing that I find interesting. The, um, the 10-year T-note, for example, the yield has been coming down, including today, I believe, yet at the same time, the dollar is weakening, right? So I think that's very interesting, which tells me Americans are buying the 10-year T-note, not foreigners. Well, that could be useful in our analysis down the road. All right, so let's get going then. Plod through the work. Let's do the work. Well, Ross says risk on, risk off, understand it. But, you know, it's what I'm saying is there's signs of both risk on and risk off. So I think a lot of people are um, taking money out of the market because the market is overbought. And that means they're smart, not amateur, and that they'll buy the market back, but at the right price. All right. Euro CAD was the question. So let me Euro Swissy, Euro Aussie, Euro Kiwi. Sure. Euro Swissy. Okay, Euro Pound's going to go. So oil dropped below 50 today. 
And that's uh, another very concerning thing. Oh, is that right, Chuck? What is risk of? No, no, Ross has been around, I think. Ross, do you want to know what that means, risk on, risk off? I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Mm, I'm looking for this Euro cat. See, you guys trade things that I don't necessarily watch minute by minute, candle by candle. Mm, here it is. All right. Cool. Okay, pretty easy setup here. Let's go out to like an hourly chart. On the first day of December. Oh, okay. Um, all right, what is risk on, risk off? While I get my drawing tool. Risk on means investors feel comfortable with market conditions and they're willing to take risk because they're in search of reward. They think they can make money. They think they can turn a profit. They feel good about things, okay? So they want to essentially buy things, make investments, start businesses, okay? Now, when market conditions change, and this is like a macro issue, macroeconomic issue, when macroeconomic conditions change and are unfavorable, they're not risky anymore. So risk off means they, they take whatever riskier, higher reward investment they made and they take it back, risk off. They take the risk off the table and they bring the money back home. So once you understand what investors do when they take risk, that money has to cross borders to get that risk on a macro level, right? This isn't a local dentist investing into a local restaurant, right? This is a private equity fund buying a company in Vietnam, right? So money's got to go from America to um, to Vietnam, right? And, and so on and so forth. And then when uh, things look bad and they're worried about not getting their money back, they bring their money back. And so then the opposite happens in the flow. So you have to learn the flow. Risk on, certain things go up in value. Risk off, certain things come, off, uh, come down in value. But the interesting thing is it's all funded. So whatever it's funded with, in a good scenario, will lose value. In a bad scenario, will gain value based on the flow of money. It's pretty simple uh, economics. Anyway, so let, let's go into the technicals here since this was the first one requested. And by the way, thank you for making the request. Uh, we started on December 1st here. Okay. This is supposed to be December. Let me, let me read this. Um, how do I do this one? All right, so on the first day of the month, we were here, okay? Great, so this is a buy pivot, okay? It's not a sell pivot, it's only a buy. It's the, in fact, it's the most important buy pivot there is, okay? We knew that on December 1st. We hit the target probably December 6th. That was the target. If you bought here, that's what you were going for here. Okay. So the way we had this, was it yesterday or the day before? I think yesterday or the day before. I had it drawn like this for you guys. Okay. And I said, even if it broke out and you bought sort of a dip into here, the best you could really hope for without taking too much risk is this area here. Now that is a weekly swing plan. The first one, like, let's do it this way. This was what you thought would happen in December. Good job. You're right. That is what happened in December. Okay, so obviously there's some profit taking, comes down. Now, using weekly swing trading, Let's say, and we talked about this uh, Monday, I think. Um, if you were still a bull and still wanted to rise it back up, this was the perfect entry on Sunday afternoon. And if you bought it there, the target was here. 
Okay. And then yet, uh, was that yesterday? Is it two? It's only Tuesday. So that was yesterday's trade plan. And then we said, if we, you know, by here, I, I said it was too late that you were supposed to do your job. And that's to make these trades on Sunday afternoon. I, I mean, if, if you can't be there, it's not my fault. That's where traders trade, obviously, right? Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So the, the only thing now is the, the, the pullback and then even in here is pretty risky now because now you're, you're setting up the triple top. Okay. But it's all there. And so notice, right, the weekly swing trade. Very, very straightforward weekly swing trade. This is a buy. Okay. This area, you're supposed to take profit. So what do you expect to happen now? Predict the future. Yeah, it's supposed to come down. And it is coming down. Okay. So would you, you know, then you say, well, Wayne, now what, now what do I do now? Like, I, I see, I could never recommend that you do this. Okay. If all you had was price action and all you were doing is maybe trading a 15 minute chart, you might attempt that. And sometimes you'll make, you, you'll do it. And other times it won't work. Um, this is the projected top for the week. This is the projected top for the month. And you want to do an, yet another trade? So Joey says, well, so maybe it'll come back around and head down to here. Well, a couple of things. Is it early in the month? Gomez wants uh, my email address. Sure, Gomez. Wayne at fxbootcamp.com. I like wine, whiskey, and cigars, Thai food, and long walks on the beach. Okay. Yeah, so if we're almost to the end, then the counter trend doesn't exist. You can do it, but it's not, once again, something I would recommend. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you, Nick. Okay, so any thoughts with that? It's done what it's done. Could you trade this short now? Well, I wouldn't trade it long. <laughs> so, like, do whatever you want with that. Um, where's the support are always the next questions, right? Are you worried about, let's say, this area to this area being support? Yeah. Which means, you know, a bull that's trying to pick up crumbs, right? A bull trying to pick up pennies in front of a steamroller is going to try that. I'm just, uh, I don't think the stats are on, are on your favor. Like, how much money are you really likely to make on that? Euro, what, you're, you're going to corner the market on euro and, well, CAD being weak with oil being below 50 bucks. Sure, I get that. But, like, what am I trying to teach you? I mean, there's some day trading setups in there, but day trading won't make you filthy, stinky rich, right? It'll pay the bills, put gas in the Lambo. Um, but, but whatever, right? What I'm trying to teach you is, this was an obvious trade and this was the obvious target. You could have, and I don't know if it was this one, but I swear I talked about it on a very similar setup. You could simply take the rest of the month off. You could have done this and been done with December and just sitting on the beach, eating Thai food, going for long walks, Smoking cigars, drinking whiskey. 
Is that right, Ian? Then you did not install the pivots, or you're using the wrong template, right? Make sure you're using, I think I left it this way, monthly, weekly pivot, uh, predictive pivots. I think that's what I called it in your files. Um, or you just simply need to add, see what I do is I add one set of pivots for weekly, one set of pivots for uh, monthly. I'm sure you could do it one more time for daily. Or you could do, I don't think I gave you this one, but like the one I showed you yesterday, I could do uh, uh, my daily Intel setup and add dailies inside my weeklies and monthlies. But that ends up being too much, right? But sometimes what you can do is you can say, I don't know what all this crap is, but it looks like there's a lot of crap there, <laughs> right? That's a lot of lines, and uh, what's all these lines down here? Maybe that's going to be important. What about this one? Nobody cares. But that's not always the case, because to me, they're not all lines. They have meaning. Uh, no, Wayne. Oh, no. No, Wayne says he likes to manually. Oh, oh, someone else has a different question. Sorry. Uh, oh, let's see if I can get that question. It's just outside the scroll for me. Hang on. Let's scroll back. Uh, I'm missing something. Are those areas you draw? Well, some of the, actually, some of these gray areas I do draw on my own. So uh, I leave myself notes. So I'll say, hey, this looks like support to me. Okay, so I do that manually, and maybe they're too close, so maybe, why don't we change this color right here right now uh, so that it's less confusing. I don't really want it red or green because that's too close to pivots. Dim gray, maybe? Slate bluish, maybe? It's too purpley, I think. Yeah, oh, I couldn't live with that. Get at blue sometimes, nice. Maybe that'll help. So I'll leave myself notes. Mementos. Remember that movie where the guy wakes up and he's in a strange hotel room? And there's notes everywhere on the walls, and he's got tattoos that say, Don't trust John. <laughs> You're like, Who's John? Where am I? What's going on? And he has to learn every single day. He has no long term memory. So every day, a new mystery starts. It's called Memento. And he has to figure out who murdered his wife before he goes to jail. So every day he's got all these clues and he has to go through all his notes again and teach himself what happened. And every day maybe he learns one new thing and he writes it down before he no before he'll fit forget. And then the next day he wakes up and he's in a strange hotel room. What's going on? Where am I? What are these notes everywhere? What's this tattoo? He's looking in the mirror for the 15th time. What's this say? Don't trust John. And then all of a sudden, ding dong at the front door. Uh, who is it? Hey, it's John, buddy. Let me in. Uh, what? <laughs> so anyways, I leave mementos for myself. And that maybe you, you see some of those on there. Aha, someone says, I am still trying to find which drawing tool you're using on. No, uh, this Okay, I am using Snagit by Camtasia. So you go to Camtasia.com, Camtasia.com, 
or just Google snag it and pay money and voila, you have an amazing drawing tool. But you're going to have to pay money. A lot of people go, oh, money. Yeah, come on, brother. Keep down, come clean. All right. So what we had another one. There was a lot of USD yen. Really? You guys are like, I tell you 10, 15, 20 times. But anyways, sure, we'll go through this. This is what you want to trade? Cool. All right. Uh, let's go to the four hour. All right. Are we at resistance or are we at support? Yeah, Lucas. Yeah, you certainly can change change them, uh, the colors. See, like, I know what these pivots are, right? So I, the, the dark gray ones, the big fat dark gray ones, I just know our monthlies and I know which one. It takes me no effort to, to understand them. So I have them in the background. I literally have them in the background. Um, I just want to see, I just want to know where they are. Boom. But if, if you're new to pivots, you're, if it's hard for you to you know, what is this? Is this a green area? Well, of course it's a green area. It's at the bottom. But if you need it, change the colors. Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Change the colors. Colors, right? Do you remember that Spike Lee uh, commercial with Michael Jordan back in the days? I fly death to five, 360 slam dunk. It's the shoes. It's the shoes. <laughs> no, it wasn't his Nike shoes. They were advertising Nike. So in this case, it's not the colors that are going to uh, help you trade. You just need to know what they are. So if you need to change the colors, change the colors, right? But anyways, what makes you money and what prevents you from losing money on the long run is opening up a chart and immediately going, oh, this is support. So the first thing we know for sure, thank you. Is it Patrick or Pratik? Pratik, welcome. Thank you for subscribing. The first thing when you open your chart, you look at this and you say, okay, we're at support. The number one thing is you cannot sell here. Full stop to bears. Full stop. Stop trading. Jack, uh, you know, move, move your stops or maybe take profit. Or, you know, if we were trending down, I'd say just move your stops. We're not trending down. Right? My grumpy old man eyes look at that and say triple bottom. Okay, so if you're a bear, you should probably take some profit. And then you'll say, but Wayne, what if, what, what if, uh, what, uh, yeah, forget that. Stop thinking that way. Just do your job, right? If you're at support, get out. If you're, now, if you're trending, you're not really at support because if you're trending, think of it this way. Or how about this? This is how I think of it. If we're trending, I'll do an uptrend now. If we're doing this over and over and over again, as far as I'm concerned, we don't have a resistance. There is no resistance, right? And I might have said that in my book, There Is No Spoon. I, I can't remember the context I, I referenced that. But anyways, uh, there is no reference. This is an uptrend. There's only support, okay? So in a strong trend, what I tend to want to do is I want to buy here. Then roll reversal, I want to buy here, right? Roll reversal, I want to buy here, right? Until I get, let's say, a, a 7, 8, 6, or a 100, and then, and then take profit, okay? But in this case, we're not trending, so it's the opposite. If it's trending, there's no resistance in an uptrend or no support in a downtrend. Well, in a sideways market, all there is is support, and all there is is resistance, right? So I change my behavior. I change my expectations is how I talk about it in the book. Matching market conditions with your expectations is a very important thing. So in this scenario, you take profit and you run. Run! Run, Forrest! Run! Right? Take your money and run. Now, the flip side of that is if you're a bull, you can start looking for opportunities. It's not clear if you're going to get one. Okay? But you might. Now, so a bull plan A might be on a smaller time frame than a four hour, like maybe on a five or 15, you're looking for reversal patterns. That would be plan A. And plan B for a bull would be here. Okay, if it did fall further, well, I think 
a bull would also look at this and say, but to quote Caddyshack, right? And plan B would be here. Okay. Isn't that sweet? Now, how do you know now if we will make a lower low? Well, whoever sold here is thinking here. Then you say, well, Wayne, you just talked me into taking profit here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you say, but whoever sold here was planning this. Yeah, I know. So, like, what are you doing? Like, like, look at this. So going back into time, if you're a bear on this, I don't know if you're a bull or a bear. It's irrelevant. But I, I, I ask you every day to form a long-term bias. Every day. And maybe 8% of you guys actually do it. You know, that's all right. If, if you hang with me long enough, uh, I, I will win you over. Right? There's something in the human spirit I have figured out every way to lose money you possibly can, and you're probably on your way to figuring it out too. And at the end of this process, somehow, if you haven't run out of money, um, then what happens is you start avoiding all those things that you've discovered uh, creates pain and, and, and suffering for you. And you'll learn that that's a big part of being a successful trader is you've identified all the pain and suffering and you're, you'll do whatever it takes to avoid the pain and suffering. And you'll find out that successful traders are not the big cowboys you, you think they are. Boop, 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 made all, made another 10,000 bucks. Let's get my Lambo. Right? Look at this. I got my, I got my big fancy watch because I'm such a great trader. You know, and then all of a sudden, when you meet the real traders making real money, that's not them at all. Those guys blow up their trading accounts and disappear. Um... It's the ones that survive are like, they, they stay away from pain and suffering. They're not wild cowboys sh shooting guns in the sky. They're, they're afraid of pain and suffering and avoid all of that. You know what I mean? Those are the ones that survive like, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, like, oh, they're afraid. You're not allowed to lose money in this game. And they're, so your big fancy rewards and your yellow Lamborghinis and your, your $40,000 watches, um, you know, reward is a function of risk. So if you made a quick 40 grand and you're going to buy yourself a $40,000 watch because it's that easy, watch how easy it is to blow your trading account because high returns are not supposed to come quickly. Right? Grinders. Well said, Jimbo. Grinders just sit down and do the job, right? So, like this whole whiny stuff, like, oh, but it could, but it could fall down here, and I can make another twenty-two pips. You're like, dude, just do your job, right? You can move your stop in that case, but you you need to turn that kind of stuff off. And then also, like the short-term scalps are fine, day trading is fine, but I you have to get into these bigger moves where this is the first day of the month, okay? This is the first day of the week. Like, you need these weekly trades in there, okay, as well as the day trade stuff. So if you're already in this trade and you're already in this trade and you're day trading, you're going to you're gonna deal with things different than if all you have is, you know, the, what are you going to do here in the New York session, right? And, and are you, you know... Are you going for it, selling at support to make the, this pip, this many pips? Are you taking that risk? Or are you going to risk the other way and say, well, it doesn't really look now, but I'm going to take a shot anyways, and you're going to risk for this? Like, right? We need more. I need you in these trades, these better trades, these bigger trades. Okay? And have a sort of a well-rounded strategy, right? And realize at the end of the day, if you're making a lot of money quickly, you're not doing things right. And you might not understand that now. Like in my book, I say things like um, professional traders um, are awake at night, rolling around in bed, worried about their profits. It's the worst thing about being a professional trader. 
Amateurs, however, are rolling around their beds at night, you know, worried about their losses, right? Well, if you're in that scenario, by definition, you're not a professional because why are you like, <laughs> why are you loaded with losses? Uh, and then one thing, and then I'll move on technically, but uh, fundamentally, the uh, the U.S. stock market now is at um, is less worth less now than than late 2017. That being said, like if you bought the S and P five hundred or or is it the Dow? I don't know. One of them. Uh, one of the indices. Which one? I guess S and P S and P five hundred. Uh, you you've lost money, right? Cool. <clears throat> now imagine you're doing your job, and you're doing what I'm asking you to do. <clears throat> that you're only making somewhere between one percent and five percent. Okay, per month. And you're like per month. Because a lot of you guys come up, you're like, I never risk more than 1% per trade. <clears throat> That's how conservative I am, Wayne. And I'm like, 1% on a trade? And, of course, you've been taught that that's conservative. Well, then I'm like, look, 1% a month is good, right? So if you're earning, let's say, on average 3%, what does that up to add up to per year? Or 2%. What's 2% compounded? Hmm? Like 33% per year? <clears throat> I'm asking you to be so conservative and so disciplined and so focused on return and avoidance of loss. I'm only asking you to make 2% a month, for example. And at 2% a month, you will be, like I'm telling you, in the top five best currency traders in the United States. Yeah, but it is compounded, our cats. So I'm guessing 33 or 31 or something, right? Okay. So 2% a month, guys, makes you the best money man forex money manager in the United States with more than a hundred million dollars. Okay. So I'm sure you're going to find some young cowboy doing it on an alert service or something. Okay, great. Uh, but a real professional with at least a hundred million, which is not a lot of money for a professional. I mean, it's tiny, it's laughable, but it's, it's a threshold more than a hundred M less than a hundred M. That's just how it breaks it down. So if you're looking at Barclays hedge and looking at the CTAs in the United States that are part of this program, and you are one of the best, so you just search for the highest returns, 2% a month, okay? And that goes back years and years and years. So that's like 30% a month, uh, a year, right? The stock market lost money. How would you like to sit down with your, your local billionaire and say, well, tough year in the markets, huh? Yeah, well, uh, here's my return, brah, 2% a month. 2% a month in the first quarter, in the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. And the trick is, sir, madam, ma madam billionaire, the trick was every single quarter seemed like it was an entirely new market. And the volatility was wicked. And it would be bullish for three months, then and then bearish for three months, and then consolidate for three months. And, they'll, and your madam billionaire will say, yeah, well, that, and then you say, yeah, you know what? And it's so funny because the market says they're so smart and yet they're so stupid. If, if you were watching the market in July, people were complaining. Volatility was so low. This was an endemic of blah, 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 blah. And then people were begging for more volatility, more volatility, more volatility. And also we had volatility and everyone's complaining. Oh, my God, there's too much volatility. You can't trade like this. Like, what a bunch of idiots. So, Madam Billionaire, 2% a month, month over month over month over month. Good market, bad market, side market, bullish market, bearish market, undecided market, rates going up, Brexit going down. I'm like a freaking 2% machine, right? And you know how attractive that's going to be in a market like we have now where bonds are not making money and stocks are not making money 
Think about it. Bonds are not making money. Stocks are not making money. This is when you're supposed to shine with your five-year track record and say, oh, well, look at my risk-adjusted performance. I'm not taking that much risk, but I'm consistently making small profits. Certainly better than way up and way down like your portfolio. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, yeah. So, anyways, you see where you see what I mean, right? I, I that these are the things I I want you to get, and 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 yes, there's a pretty good chance. In fact, we will break this support, and we will head down here. But is it worth it? Okay. The only way you're really, really, really going to get filthy, stinking rich, guys, is to be able to do the 2%. And you're like, but Wayne, I don't have any money, so 2% is like $2 a day. Nobody cares about that because if you had, right, if you had $20 million, you're going to be paying yourself $20,000 a day. It's the same 2%. That's true. What, what was I going to do? Oh, oil. Yeah, I guess we can do it this way. Actually, CP, I'm looking at one that's 40 million in uh, Upper East Side. All right, uh, but yeah, decent plan. Um, let's see, Brent, WTI. I'm going to change, well, no, I guess we have enough. Um, this is a dangerous area because I think we even, I, I might have even thrown it out that even a lower low to pop back up, but um where were we? I think we were at like $61 a barrel or something. 61 is, whoa, it was higher than that. I think we were about here. Uh, I'm going to guess about here. Where is that? 67. You know, I stopped buying it around 67, right? As an example of, um, how do you, turning off stubbornness, right? And you have to have a line in the sand. That was my line in the sand of stop being a bull. And then we got way down. Oops, I guess I won't use a dry tool. Uh, then we got way down to here. And based on pivot points, we said this was the likely bottom or could be the likely bottom, especially if you're a bull and you are trying to work your way back up, right? So this is another line in the sand, if you will. And it held for three weeks. Um, I don't know how I want to deal with this. You have every right to be a bear, okay? You have every right to be a bear. I don't know if you want to be a bear in this situation, but you certainly can. And the way you would play it is, you know, like this. Uh, plan A or plan B would be like this, okay? Okay. Okay. Maybe it's a head fake. Yes. And in that case, um, I see, that's where I think we talked about this, but not on this setup, but I think on my other WTI, WTI setup, I said, if you're a bull, don't be shocked if it does one of these things. But once again, I don't trade it. Uh, well, you would trade it here. I need the 100% retracement before I do that. So this whole time, 
I've been trying to teach you how to be a conservative, right? And buy at the right places so that you can manage the risk appropriately. We had a nice buy open and then it just died. It's really unfortunate. Um, okay. But it's the end of the year. So in this case, you know, uh, I think there's every reason in the world to be a bear. You certainly can be. And if so, you're, you're essentially looking at that. Okay. I don't like it because it, it means bad things. But maybe it's just something simple like there's just too much oil. And that's that. Okay. Yeah, well, and then it's just technical, right, Chuck? So there... The thing is, it is very technical, Chuck. Um, like the weekly swing trade on oil was sell in here and the target was here, right? It's quite beautiful. Um, but I wouldn't have been so certain as someone more bullish than bearish or wanting to be more bullish than bearish. I wouldn't have been so certain that you can get through this level. Now it happened. But I wouldn't have thought that. Why? Well, I wasn't a bear, right? So if I was a bear, I guess you would be certain. I don't think even a bear would be certain. So I think this caught a lot of people off guard. Um, we got a lot going on tomorrow. Maybe everything changes tomorrow, but maybe nothing changes tomorrow. And that, that would be a story as well. Thank you, C CP, for uh, subscribing. And, and thank you, Paul, for subscribing. Thank you, Kim, for subscribing. Appreciate you guys. Welcome to the family. YouTube critique, I think, or yeah, I got you already, critique. Welcome to the family. Yeah, so Michael's going into the petrodollar. So yeah, 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 yeah. That that's part of the equation, but not sort of on a daily thing. It's just a subsequent response to a changing reality. So, anyways, um, there's just too much oil. It looks like. Um, I don't think like the U.S. is dumping strategic petroleum reserves onto the market and stuff, but you know. But anyways, um, Trump has said he does want low oil prices, all that kind of stuff. But whatever, um, it's something to ponder over the um, over the holidays. Thank you, Gregors. Thank you, Vera. So over the weekend, uh, maybe uh, I'll take a look at, not the weekend, but the holidays. Uh, I think what I'll do is spend some time with the EIA and OPEC analysis and, and look at their supplies and their forecasts and stuff. I think it, we'll have to figure this one out because um, I see a lot of things coming. I didn't see this one coming. I, I understood the down part, but I was a bull setting up and up. Okay. So with that being said, what the hell happened? So Brexit problems, European economic slowdown. But there must be more than that going on. Well, yeah, um, Chuck said, uh, Chuck brought it up, the evidence of uh, product, uh, production cuts. Well, we talked about that. I said, once they OPEC made their announcement, OPEC and Russia, I said, you need to watch for two things, waivers. Who gets a hall pass? And they often hand out a lot of hall passes. And the second one was evidence right, of compliance. How many OPEC and members plus Russia are cheating? And to what extent are they cheating? Because they're probably all cheating, but are, all they, are they all cheating a little bit or are they all cheating a lot? Okay. Yeah. I could see OPEC moving toward that, but the opposite could also end up 
being a consequence, right? So, uh, so anyways, uh, these are the things. And I said we won't know compliance until January, okay? So maybe in January, I think it would be more like March. But anyways, in January we start learning. But it might be more like March we start buying oil back. Okay. Lady Cash says, yeah, they're all cheating. But the thing is, you know, I don't mean it like a cultural way, like people from OPEC countries and Russians um, are cheaters. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying a cartel based on game theory. So uh, in one of my, um, on my, one of my economics classes, it was International Political Economics. Uh, there, we, we studied game theory for a while, and I thought it was really interesting. Thank you, Irfan. And so because of that, I took an entire class on game theory, <laughs> an entire class in game theory. And so anyways, long story short, I know a little bit of something. And everyone in a cartel, uh, I mean, you can remove OPEC and just do the, the Cali cartel or <laughs> the Medellin cartel, um, right? Or the, or the Mexican uh, marijuana cartel. Um, They're incentivized to cheat. It's called the lo laws of reciprocity. Oh boy, big boy words. So we got a situation like, uh, let's go blank. Oh, okay. So you have a small town, and everyone in the town is a sheep herder. Okay. But in the middle of town, there's a beautiful park for everyone to enjoy. Because it's hard taking care of sheep all day. So you got a bunch of people over here. They have their sheep. And they have their sheep. And they have their sheep. And they have their sheep. Okay? What happens to the grass with sheep in this pen and sheep in this pen? and sheep in all these pens. What happens to the grass? The sheep nibble it down. But then this guy says, hmm, the grass in the park is lovely and lush and green. Hmm? Look at the lush green park. The grass is just beautiful, vibrant, and verdant. However, they've all agreed. You're not allowed to use the park for your sheep. Okay, so they've all agreed. But here's the thing. The sheep herders... They're with their sheep all day. So this guy says, aha, hmm, nobody's looking. Nobody can see me. So he cheats and he takes a sheep over to the park. They eat and get fat. And then he goes back and, and all the, all the sheep are, <laughs> you have to do all the colors, right? All of a sudden this guy comes to the park and he's like, what the heck happened to my uh, grass? Half of it's gone. Why is it? And then this guy is like, what happened to the grass? What happened to the grass? This guy cheated. Okay. And after a while, he does it again. Once and then back. And when again. And as soon as they figure it out, what happens? They all cheat. Because they're like, they're complying, doing their job. But this guy's cheating and he's getting fatter more beautiful, healthier sheep. He's incentivized. He's winning because everyone else is losing. And, and the law of reciprocity is, as long as everyone's compliant, everyone will win equally. But if someone sneaks in, he will unusually benefit. Like, ridiculous, because he gets all the benefits from these guys' the sacrifices go to this guy. So if there's even a hint, wink, 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 that someone's cheating, they all cheat. 
Because, like, let's say you're this person now, and you're the world's nicest person. Okay? You, you're a magenta person. You're a magenta soul. Okay? And you're like, well... I'm from the magenta land, and we don't, we never cheat magenta land. So this guy cheats, 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 and your sheep die, and you're no longer a sheep herder. You go do something else. You're gone, because now you can't keep up. You have, the whole system is against you. So you die and you're gone. So you can do the math on that. That's what the interesting thing about game theory is you can do the math to prove that. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, Nash. John Nash. Watch the movie uh, A Beautiful Mind. That's John Nash. And he won the Nobel Prize in economics in math or might have been mathematics. Uh, I guess it's mathematics uh, for game theory. Magenta land. <laughs> so, anyways, that's what's going on with OPEC. So it's not that uh, you know people from oil producing countries somehow are, are are not trustworthy because then you should also say, well, what about the Canadians and the Americans and. Malaysia's got oil, right? Uh, it's just a cartel it has its strengths, but it also has its weaknesses. That's right, Nash equilibrium. Right, you're not really a cool kid until you get to you know talk about Nash equilibria. <laughs> Anyways. Well, what happens though is, uh, AKA, everyone gets average. So what's the average amongst eight players that all cheat? How much does it raise the bar for, for everyone? Well, what in, in the example of the park, you, and everyone is taking their sheep there, the, the grass in the park is now equally as bad as the grass in all their fields. There's no upside there's no benefit and certainly you don't get to enjoy a park at the end of the day and sit there and say what a beautiful grass you know what this is so lovely right it's like it's a lose-lose scenario right so you can have a win-lose a lose-win a win-win or a lose-lose in a very basic scenario like um a, pr a prisoner's dilemma Right? Two people have been convicted of working together on a crime and they face 20 years in prison. However, if one gives up the other, they only spend two years in prison. While the other one remains, you know, for 25 years. Meanwhile, not only does the other guy get out in two years, he knows where the money is. So he gets out in two years, gets the money, while the other guy rots in jail. Do you snitch? <laughs> and it gets very interesting. And you can tweak the variables and you get different results, which is also very interesting. But you get it, right? So the thing is, if you both don't snitch, maybe you only get 10 years in jail. Right? And you both sh share the money equally. Okay? That's pretty good, right? If one guy snitches, he gets all the money and spends two years. The other guy gets 25 years for not confessing and gets no money. Wah, wah, wah. Or they both snitch on each other, right? And get 12 years and split the money equally. So the choice is 12 years, 50-50, 2 years, 100%, 
And what was the tenure? Uh, Win-win? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, not confess, not snitch at all. But you're risking, if you don't snitch, and you're like, come on, buddy, don't snitch, don't snitch, because you're in different rooms. You don't know what they're going to say. You can't influence them. How certain are you that you're not going to get 25 years and no money? How much do you trust the other guy? Well, it's all game theory, right? And, and a lot of this is, like, think about these OPEC guys. We're talking about, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe a billion dollars a day. Okay. Do you cheat? Would you cheat for a billion dollars? That's one question. Would you cheat if you thought everyone else was cheating? Well, in that case, if you don't cheat, you're at a disadvantage. Right? So anyways, do you know how the prisoner dilemma works? You can do the math. Cheat. Because if you cheat and the other guy doesn't cheat, what happens? You get 100% of the money and you only spend two years in jail. So if you cheat and the other guy cheats, you both spend 12 years in jail and you split the money 50-50. Now, if you tell the truth or if you don't snitch, what happens? You might spend 25 years in jail and get jack. You get nothing. Like, what's the upside? Loyalty? Amongst criminals? <laughs> right? So anyways, um, so it, it's just, that, that's the weakness of the cartel. It's just do the math. Just do the math. Uh, so it's an interesting class if you ever want to go back to university in the middle of your adulthood and do incredible math tables for hours a day. Jeremy says, no one's going to, no, but it's the law of reciprocity. Do you cheat or do you not cheat? And I was just showing you that everyone is incentivized to cheat. Therefore, if you think that guy's cheating and that guy's cheating, there's no benefit to you whatsoever to not cheat. You would have to cheat too, and that's the law of reciprocity. It only works if nobody cheats. But if you think people are cheating, you're going to cheat. But he thinks you're cheating because you are cheating. But you're only cheating because he's cheating. And you think she's cheating. But she's only cheating because he, she thinks he's cheating. And so, like, no one wants to cheat. But everyone thinks the other person's probably cheating. So they cheat. But they're only cheating because you're cheating. And you're only cheating because you think they're cheating. And, and then it happens. Everybody cheats. <laughs> yeah all right thank you fx forecast uh all right so let's start over again R requests what would you like me to cover technically did we we did the usdn already i'll wait because there's a, <clears throat> a 30 second lag so i'll wait a little bit here but look at these awesome moves man Let's take a look. 40 pips in the London session. 36 in Asia. Boom! 50 pips yesterday in New York. Oh, snap! Ripper, 24 pips last London session. Woo-wee! Big money, big money, no whammies. Yeah, actually, Carlos, I was thinking about Christmas movies. And I bought, like, Elf and, uh, and all these things that everyone buys. And I thought, you know what? I should get Trading Places. It's not really a Christmas movie, but it happens at Christmas. And I love the movie. And I love seeing the old trading floor. And did you know the trading floor in, um, where the Dukes traded, the Duke and Duke? That's Philadelphia. Did you know that Philly had trading pits like that? You had... Philly doing a frozen concentrated orange juice, and you had um, you had New York doing sugar. <clears throat> you had Chicago doing uh, uh, what, 
I mean, there's a lot going on. Soybeans, let's say. But then you had Kansas City doing certain types of wheat and Chicago doing other types of wheat. Like, it used to be like – and when I worked in San Francisco, when I, I – uh, I, my, first, my first business that I started, I had a, a small office. It was seven feet by seven feet. <laughs> no joke. Uh, I have fantastic memories of this place. Uh, anyways, but it was in the best – place uh, uh, in downtown San Francisco on Montgomery Street, where all the big buildings are and the old buildings, not the new buildings. And, and uh, <clears throat> there, down the street was the Pacific Stock Exchange. So even San Francisco had an exchange. Thank you, AKA. Thank you, Lotaro. Lau Lotaro. I think I got that right. I'm not accenting it properly, but anyways. Foolish uh, Eris is Wayne. I've always been curious about mistakes. I, you know, I talk about mistakes I've made a lot in the in my book. I don't remember any specific mistakes uh, highlighted there. Like, like a particular one, but I made a lot, there's no doubt. And there was a period where I remember I experimented where I'd spend like an hour creating my trade plan. Yeah, there's a clue right there, right? You, this is probably something that you should do. But anyways, I would spend about an hour doing a trade plan and then I would do the exact opposite. Once I knew... I 100% for sure wanted to buy, I would sell. <laughs> I still lost money. Like, son of a... So, um, so I, I've certainly made mistakes. Um, I, I think, like, the biggest mistake overall, in general, not like an, an individual one where I lost so much money or something, uh, I think I discovered... It's my mediocre trades that were costing me the most. It was costing me the most time. It was costing me the most money. Um, and so I spent a, a fair amount of time trying to learn quality. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. Welcome to the family. So, you know, it was that where I found... You know, I, I didn't lose money, let's say, buying in a down period like this. I lost money buying and selling in a period like this. <laughs> That's where I ended up losing most of my money. So that once I had that realization, I kind of switched over. Now, there, there were times, and I remember the last time I went through a hard period, um, it was after the, the financial crisis. So you have to remember, like, we were making like a thousand pips a day on like pound yen, for example. And it was really, 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 really scary, real volatile times. Probably a lot like trading Bitcoin right now. I, I don't know. But when Bitcoin moves a thousand dollars in a day, it must be pretty exciting. Um, but, you know, and trading oil, I remember I would make two dollars in oil in like 12 seconds. You don't make $2 trading oil in a day. $2 might be a week. <laughs> I used to make it in 12 seconds. Or, of course, you'd hit the button and it would take 12 seconds for it to clear. So in the 12 seconds, I might make $2, $1, lose money. I wouldn't know in the 12 seconds it took me to get up. But those are not like the times I lost money, but in times like when the markets are moving that well or that much, when you're right, you're very, very, very right. And when you're wrong, you're horrific. And the, the so when you ask, you know, about a particular like mistakes, I don't think of a mistake, I think of a period. And it was this period where over the course of a, about a week, I, I, yeah, I remember it as a week. I, I, I had like a bad Monday and a bad Tuesday. And then Wednesday was worse. 
Thursday was worse. Friday started really bad. And then in the last hour of this trading, it just like, I probably lost more in that one. The, well, I probably lost the same amount in that one hour on Friday that I lost the entire week. And the entire week was uh, unbelievably bad, right? So it, it just compounded to the point where in an hour, I, I managed to lose as much money as I lost in five days. And five, those five days are, and I just, I just remember I literally threw myself back to get away from the, the, the computer. And I was just like, holy shit. I, I remember it like for sure. Just, I couldn't believe it. And it was like, I came to my senses and like, I had managed to make absolutely every mistake you could possibly make. Every mistake. I was revenge trading. I was adding to losers. I was buy, uh, selling. Or, well, in this case, it was buying. So I was buying at resistance, and, and the market was crashing, and and I was losing more money. And for some reason, I tried to support. Like I just couldn't. I just couldn't believe it. I, I was flabbergasted. Not because I lost that much money, because we all know you can do it. But I didn't think I had it in me anymore. I really remember it because it had been years since I had a situation like that. And I just threw myself back and I reminded myself that it's still there. No matter how good you are, you're still capable of it. So you have to stay vigilant. And then I, I, I remember I spent probably two days going through all my trades from the previous month or two. And I started to see that I was getting relaxed on, on a lot of my entries. I was making money, but I, I, I was getting a little bit more sloppy on every trade, a little less disciplined on the entries and exits and stuff. And it just slowly compounded to the point I was trading loosey goosey. And then I hit a market situation where I got punished and I got royally punished. But it wasn't the market's fault. Uh, it, the, the way I would think about it is it would be like someone that quit smoking 10 years ago and then goes to a party and the cigarettes smell so good. And you're like, well, you know, it's been 10 years. You know, one wouldn't hurt. Has anyone been in that situation? The next day you're on your fifth cigarette, you're right back to where you were and you're like, son of a bitch. I can't believe it, right? Um, I mean, that was me when with crack cocaine. I mean, I thought I got off crack cocaine, but then there I was in the bathroom at the uh, bus depot and I thought, you know what? Just one more hit won't hurt. And uh, sure enough, back to prostitution. I was really surprised by that, but luckily I cleaned myself up. <laughs> Everyone's like, wait, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> well, you know, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, uh, so I had gotten a little bit loosey goosey. So it's not like one particular trade, uh, uh, not one particular mistake, but it was sort of just less disciplined. And then all of a sudden, holy crap, I made every mistake. So I walked away from that. First of all, uh, I, I was doing FX boot camp at the time. Um, and I told everybody, I told everybody, I told everybody, and I was absolutely clear about it. Um, and then the next thing I did was my plan was I was just going to do what I call putts, little 25-25 OCOs. I'm not even trying to make money is what I told people. And I'm going to trade these little winners. And my goal is to rebuild my discipline. And I'd like to make like a hundred trades in a row without losing. That was, they're not going to make much money. I mean, I dropped my lot size to like, I don't know, <laughs> nothing. And then I was only trying to make 15 or 20 pips at a time. I might have even been 10, 10 OCOs guys, like nothing. Right. But I wanted to show myself I had the capability of picking hardcore support, 
hardcore resistance, trading it, and just, just trading it. I didn't care about how right I was, how wrong I was. I'm just going to make 10 pips, and then I'm going to do it again, 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 and again, and again, for days and days and days, that's all I did to rebuild my um, discipline. Um, and that's that. So I don't know if that was like 2009 or something. Okay. Well, cat, our cats, I was asked about it. So anyways. Oh, is that right, Gary? It's streaming beautifully here. 0% 0 0.0% 0 .0 drop frames. So, anyways. Is that right? So Ian said what? 28 years did you say? After 28 years of smoking. Oh. And stopping for a very long time. You're smoking again, huh? Ah. Is that who is doing that 20 trade today? Yeah. Okay, well. Yeah, I'll get I'll send out that email today. I really got I got lots of but, you know, I always, go, I always seem to complain, right? I will send out anyone that has downloaded the chart templates, right? And, and by the way, the, uh, the link is in the description below the video. Anyone that's downloaded, I will email them today the, the Better OCO uh, EA for, for doing things like doing these putts. I call them putts. They're, by the way, so if you go back probably about the same time, you know, actually, you know what, thinking about it, in response to that terrible period, uh, I told people how I was going to rebuild my confidence. And I'm, I'm going to do these OCOs, and I'm going to do lots and lots and lots, maybe 100 of them. And then I said, and I called them putts. And people are like, why, did, why are you calling it a putt? And I told the story. So this is how far, so... So now I, I'm starting to recall because of that period, I, I, that's how I regained my confidence. And then I made a video about it. And the story goes like this. Around that period, uh, I was reading a story about um, Phil Mickelson, the, the golfer. Okay. One of the best golfers to ever live. And I read that every single day he would go out and make like five foot putts because you know he's got his own golf course in his backyard right so anyways he goes out to his practice screen he picks one of the the holes and a five foot putt is nothing but i'm telling you when you're making a five foot putt if you make the five foot putt you win the tournament your name goes on the trophy forever you get a million millions of dollars in endorsements and you go into the Hall of Fame as one of the greatest golfers ever to live, or you miss the putt by an inch and no one gives a damn about you. So when, when you're in that situation, the hole seems to shrink a little bit, and the slope of the green seems to exaggerate. And you, and you say to yourself, don't miss left, don't miss left, don't miss left. So, of course, you hit it to the right too much, right? So, anyways, so what, to overcome this, every single day, he would go out to his yard and he'd make a hundred five foot putts. Now they're just straight putts, but he got really good at hitting five foot, five foot putts. And he'd do it again. One, two, three, four, nice and easy, right? Boom, boom, a hundred putts. Now, if he was on number 76 and he missed it, he would have to start over again, which is very painful. And, you know, but by the time you get to like 88, 89, 90, 91, well, you certainly don't want to miss the, the putt and do it all over again. So suddenly it builds up some stress, right? You don't want to miss the 99th putt and have to do all 100 over again. 
So he went through this so that when he got into the situation where he has a five foot putt to win the tournament and go into in the history, he says to himself, I got this. He doesn't say, don't miss left. He says, oh, I got this. This is mine. Okay. And so I told that story and then used these putts like if I buy at support and sell at resistance, I can make 10 pips with my eyes closed. Just like Phil Mickelson can make a five foot putt with his eyes closed. Does that make sense? And that's how you build your discipline. So I'll send out that OCO that I used then because the one I included in it was the wrong OCO software, uh, the wrong EA. So I'll, I'll email you the uh, new EA. Okay. So make sure you, uh, if you haven't downloaded it, uh, download the, the template now and then you're on the list and then I'll email the new stuff and then I'll upload the download link so future people have the right one. Okay. All right. Let's go through. Uh, that's not quite good. Uh, well, like gold, we already knew this, right? We knew this coming up into there. <clears throat> Our plan A was here. Our B was there. Our plan A, you can't even see it now, but it's an arrow. You see the arrow? This was our plan on Friday. Up, 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 down, down. There's your plan on Monday. Up, 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 up. It's Tuesday. We've hit the target. Okay. Okay, Tony. So if you weren't here Friday or Monday, well, there you go, bro. This is where your bulls are supposed to take profit. There might be some upside on a weekly basis. So you might be able to, you might be able to get this up into this area, like 1257. Actually, the, the, the actual one, sorry, is uh, 1252. You might get this up to 1252. Uh, depends on how confident you are. This is definitely, like this is the conservative weekly target. So yeah, but at what point are you recognizing that this is trying to tell you to be conservative? But on the smallest time frame, if you're if you're skip scalping along on a five minute chart, you certainly can take a shot in here and then try to ride it up above. Okay. How big was this? Yeah, so, yeah, you can treat it like a six one eight. So that gets us to uh, one three eight two. One three eight two is twelve fifty two. So if you're only doing like a, a five minute scalp kind of thing, you can you this was your buy zone. You can certainly try to buy little mini dips, and your target is six one eight to one three eight two, which is also the M two to M four scenario. So it's all pretty pretty easy. Okay. Aussie dollar share, I'd be happy to do that. Aussie dollar. Well, first of all, let's talk about Aussie yen before we do Aussie dollar. <clears throat> okay, when things are good, this is supposed to go up. When things are bad, this is supposed to go down. This is the last chance probably for the month of December for this to go up. Okay. Okay. We talked about this yesterday where this definitely could be a scenario where this falls until the third week of January. Then it will then it will rise for two weeks until let's just say first week, uh, let's say until NFP in Feb. And then it will fall again till The Mar there's a March Feb uh, a March a March um, a Fed meeting, so it'll fall until the March Fed. Then uh, there'll be a rally probably after the April. No, the 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 Fed meeting will create the rally, and then in April, first week of April, it will fall. It will fall April, May, 
probably till June, June um, NFP. Then we will move side sideways. See, I'm putting the when does the market realize we're at neutral? Um, so they don't raise interest rates here. So that rallies in March. Then it comes down hard in April, <sighs> May. What does May do, guys? So Feb up, April down. What does May do? Is there going to be like a two-month rally, May and June? A dip for the, the June Fed meeting and then sideways. Hmm. We'll have to plot that out sometime. Anyways, that's what I'm thinking. So uh, I would like this to go up. I'd like this to go up first and then down one more time in January. I don't really want to see the real fall until January. But we talked about this late last week and certainly in the swing trading group last week where this may be the end because we knew we knew in December, somewhere between December and January, right? We knew the end pairs that were going to strengthen. I don't, I never know if it's on like the first day or the last day, but well, in this case, or the first day here, I don't know which, when, is it December 1? Is it December 15th? Each year it's different for slightly different reasons. Okay? Or January. I've seen it all. I don't think there's consistency. There, there's Every year is sort of unique. Now, I guess what I haven't done, and it might be interesting if, if I had more time and more resources, uh, like if I had a quant again. I used to have a quant. Uh, if I had a quant, I'd, I'd, I'd look at, like a four year cycle in these moves and try to put a political cycle over top of it. And then there's an 18 year business cycle. And I wonder if I can put an 18 year cycle on it, but I don't think the foreign exchange market with retail is mature enough to, to get solid data, but it'd be interesting. But right now I don't see a pattern. It just, it's every year slightly different. So the thing is, it looks like it started right on the first day of December. And so we talked about this Friday last week on Friday, probably in the swing trading group. I don't know, but it looks like it very plausibly could, you know, could be one of these situations where it just keeps falling until the third week of January, false rally, and then we sell it again, and it, and it falls all the way till uh, uh, May first. Okay. Well, Michael, you can take notes. That's a really a good thing to do. Um, and then ask me again in the future because, you know, I'm not making it up. It's actually in, in my brain. Okay. So we can we can certainly go through it again and again and again. So I, I, I noticed I was looking this way. I'm looking in my mind at, at like a calendar in my mind. So I'm just trying to line things up between... Uh, seasonality calendars, Fed calendars, NFPs. I mean, there's a lesson in that, right? Every single day, Tony. Hallelujah. Is it 8:55? Let me do one more, and then uh, then I then we'll take off. Give me one more. Let's do another one technically. But what what currency pair? Yeah, Raymond, uh, I don't think we're going to broadcast next week. There, there's just it makes no sense. So I think we'll probably I might squeeze one or two in there by surprise. So you should subscribe. Uh, I might squeeze one, let's say the day after Boxing Day the 27th and 28th maybe, or squeeze one in right before New Year's, or we'll see. But 
Um, I, I don't want to get you to over trade in a mediocre market. That's certainly not my goal, right? But subscribe and I might surprise you. Uh, Pound, Swissy, EuroCAD. We did EuroCAD, Kimmy. Um, Euro dollar. Thank you for su subscribing, Celine. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going with Ranko's Pound Swissy. Let's do some pissy. Uh, let's do this. Let's go four hour or daily four hour. <sighs> Nothing here, guys. Really? D oh, this is Kiwi Swiss. What did you ask for pound Swiss? Sorry. Well, I don't know why it's Kiwi Swiss. Don't trade Kiwi Swiss. Aussie Swiss. Here we go. That's funny. Did I pull up the wrong one? Scan Swiss. Okay. My bad. All right, so we're doing pound Swissy. I think I'll just pull a pound then. Um, pound Swissy. Boom. All right, pound Swissy is great. It's great. All right. This trade plan failed. Wah, wah, wah. All right, so let's go all the way down here. What is the projected bottom for the month of December, according to Wayne's theory? Deep. We knew that on the first day of the month. And when you open out a position, and we may have talked about it at the time, I'm not sure, but when you open out a position, you ride the four-hour 21 EMA, which is the orange line. And, of course, it worked great, huh? Boom, 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 boom. Look at all these great. And then finally the break. And then hit the target and stop falling. Now these these lines here, my pivot points, don't open and close as the market's moving. We said on this day here, at this point in time, this would be the bottom of the market. If the market's going to be bearish, that's going to be the bottom. Isn't that nice knowing where the bottom is, right? Like, that's the bottom of the S&P 500. <laughs> so I'm eating lunch yesterday. Stock market comes up. Oh, the, the market's falling, the market's falling. I'm like, yeah, I noticed that. We just hit the bottom. <laughs> what do you mean we just hit the bottom? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, that's the bottom. Right on. Gary says, Wayne, I'm starting my trading career full time in January with Trader's Way. Awesome. I've changed my whole life to be able to do this with you and your team. Thank you. Thank you. The templates are in the des description below the YouTube video. It's something like, well, it's charts.fxbootcamp.com. Okay, so anyways, that is the bottom. We See, we don't, let, let's be clear. We don't know, let's say on the first day here. Let's go here, okay? We don't know if this is going to fall to here. In fact, that's not a great place to expect it, but uh, it, this did make a lower low. Certainly planable. The other scenario is it does this. Okay, we know it factually. Which one will it be? That's what we don't know. So now you use technical analysis. Okay. Okay. And the funny thing is it was supposed to go up at this price. It opened up the up price. Not this price, not that 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 price, not this price, not this price, not this one. 
this price right here. And if this acted as support and if price went up, then we're going to here. Now I'd probably like throw this in here as a monkey wrench and say, well, you gotta be careful. There's old resistance and all that kind of stuff. But there's only one scenario and it's very clear. Up buyers, bulls buy here and they target here. Bears, let's change the color here. Bears are targeting here. So once you broke this support level, that's all there was. You ride the 21 and it's done. So what happened was basically a rejection up here, double top of a double top, lower low, lower high, hit target, and then the smart, savvy, disciplined traders took their profits and took the rest of December off because it's a great time to be in the Caribbean. Okay. What happens now? It's always like the worst question, right? It's crumbs now. But if you're a bear, okay, that's bearish, right? If you're a bear, where's the resistance? All this kind of stuff. If you're a bull, where's the support? Well, if you're a bull, you need the double bottom, higher, high, higher, low scenario. You already know that though, right? Right? You see that, right? Shouldn't be a revelation. So how do you put that together? Let's put this, okay? If you're going to try to buy it, the first step is, are you at support? Well, yeah, this is monthly support, this whole area support. So you're looking for a reversal here. And you knew that 12 days in advance that you probably are going to see a reversal pattern somewhere between this point and this point in price. So look at this. On the 10th day of December, right? On the 14th day of September, pound Swissy gave to me. All right, down double bottom. Okay, so you can trade the double bottom if you want. You don't have to. That's aggressive and risky. You don't have to. But once you get the higher high and you're a bull, then what you're supposed to do is look left, look here, drag this across, and somewhere around there you want to be a buyer. So your simple plan now, your simple plan is you're thinking this. Okay, great. Then Monday shows up, and now you have to enter your weekly swing trade. You, you already know you got this higher one moving on. But what about, what do you do on Sunday morning? Well, you want to buy somewhere between 125.14 and 124.70. Oh, shit. It opened exactly in the middle of those two prices. So, Sunday afternoon, 5 p.m. Eastern time, you're like, oh, I'm a buy. So you buy it, and you, that's your target based on a weekly swing. And your monthly is basically the same thing, so there's congruency on, on time frames. What we don't know is if all the smart money is left right? And everybody's in the Caribbean. And you're trying to trade the, the, the fourth wave of something that's already done long and gone, right? Again, I'm trying to get you guys into the bigger stuff. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I like day trading, right? I love day trading. Um, but you have to remind yourself what is happening in the market, not the moment in the market, okay? A double top last month, and I believe this was resistance, um, set this up. And somebody sold this at the end of November, and there was a front run I remember talking about, but the, the double top, then the lower low, lower high, then the lower low and lower high, right? And then hit here and stop. You understand, like, this was the plan 
here. Uh, the, actually, this is near the beginning of November. That was somebody's plan. A lot, like a bank, for example. They're not looking at what's going to happen in the next 45 minutes on the five-minute chart. Somebody sold it here because it was pretty obviously uh, resistance. And now they hit this monthly target and they stopped. They stopped like with precision at exactly where you are supposed to technically. And there were lots of little follow-on trades here. They're not five-minute and 15-minute scalps. These are big logical moves that took weeks and weeks and weeks. But that's where the money is. But see how then you can compound it into, all right, we've hit the monthly target now, so it's not going to fall any further, so it'll probably double bottom. Oh, look, double bottom. So now what we need is a higher, high, higher, low. Oh, there's the higher, high. Here's the higher, low. Here's this week's weekly swing trade. Okay. And then you have to say, well, bears are going to look to sell in here. So there's going to be some huge profit taking here and probably re resumption of said trend. But then we there's a cloud over all of this of the holidays and year end. Okay. So anyways, that that I give you the pound yen or the pound swissy pissy. So I didn't mean to pissy all over your shoes. Oh, oh. Thank you for being part of my team. Thank you for the loyalty and respect you show me every day. I sound like a broken record, but I, I actually mean it. I don't know what else to say. Um, thank you. Thank you for being on my team. I do appreciate you. I, I, I do respect you. I like, I like the time we spend together. So uh, to keep these going forever and ever and ever. I mean, I've only been doing webinars for 15 years. I only have 6,000 videos on YouTube. 6,000. Um, but I'd like to keep doing it. So um, to ensure that that happens, uh, become a client at Trader's Way. They make this possible for everybody. So peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Namaste. I will see you tomorrow for the market open, but then maybe even what? You want to do the Fed thing together? If you want to do the Fed thing together in the, in the, not the chat room, once the video makes itself available, which is probably in the, in the next two minutes, let me know in the comments area, leave a comment, not in the chat, in the comment under the video, let me know if you want to do an FOMC special event tomorrow. Do it live in, in this room. You'll need to be a subscriber because otherwise you won't get the alert. Uh, and I want to know if you even care. If you don't care, I'll just do something else. So type in in the comment area, FOMC, please, and, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. All right. So thanks, and I will see you uh, tomorrow. Cheers.